The Barbican is a magical space on its own, but my neighbour Totoro, which currently plays there, just multiplies that magical feeling. The new play is based on the famous Studio Ghibli film of the same name, but just without the U. It's one of the few Studio Ghibli films that I've actually watched, and I enjoyed it. I wasn't enamoured by it, I wasn't like really obsessed with it, but I enjoyed it. It's a cute little film that has some really beautiful animation. And I think the film has this kind of charm and simplicity to it that just kind of endears you. The plot reflects this. It's about two young girls who have moved into a new house closer to their mother's hospital. As the girls explore, they meet the spirits of the forest, including the friendly Totoro. So, have they managed to transfer this magic of the film to the stage? Today, I'm going to share all my thoughts on the RSC's production of My Neighbor Totoro. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I do reviews, I do discussions, and if that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me out and helps up the channel. But let's talk about us and Totoro. With Joe Hisaishi on board as the executive producer, it was obvious that the music in this production was going to be great. As the composer on the original film, Hisaishi composed some truly iconic music including the ending theme, and this production lifts all of this music and uses parts of the original Japanese and some English interpreted ones. This music is so whimsical and it's a perfect world builder. It matches so wonderfully. And I'm glad that this is an element that stayed as it moved to the stage. Matched with the beautiful vocals of Ai Ninomiya, the music adds to the atmosphere of the world of Totoro while also calling back to the source material. I must say, and I really want to uh, hammer home how powerful this is, but it is so beautiful to see a show with an all Asian cast. It's an unfortunate rarity, especially in the world of like big theatre like this. And I hope that shows like this, like Totoro, can pave the way for more Asian representation on our stages and more shows that celebrate Asian culture. The cast are all at the top of their game, with most of our cast doubling as puppeteers. More on that later. A few leads do really stand out. Ami Okamara Jones takes the role of Satsuki, who leads the cast phenomenally. Her age is perfectly reflected through her energy and her vocal choices. Jones brings such a fantastic emotional heart to the show. Mei Mac plays Saksuti's energetic younger sister Mei. She's so endearing in the role. The role of a young child like this can sometimes come off as a little bit overbearing and it's quite a hard balance to strike. But Mac really keeps the heart and innocence of this role in her portrayal. Dai Tabuchi is the girl's father and I really felt he played the role with such warmth. And you can always tell through the script and through Tabuchi's portrayal that he really does care for these girls, even if he does slip up here and there. The same can be said for Jacqueline Tate's granny, who kind of acts as a parental figure to the girls. I'm really glad that this is a role that they kind of expanded in this show. And then there's our talented ensemble. These all double up as puppeteers in the show, and they're dressed in the very traditional Japanese puppeteer outfits. I'm very glad that this is an element that kind of translated and they kind of leaned into that Japanese style of storytelling rather than going for a more Western approach. They are a truly talented bunch, switching between a wide range of different types of puppetry. The entire ensemble really do come together to bring this show to life. It would be remiss of me not to mention them. The book is very faithful to the film. It expands on a few characters, such as Kanta, who is a young boy in the village who is hinted at having a crush on Satsuki. This crush is kind of hinted at in the film, and it's nice to see them expand it in the play. But the show's length is mostly added to by sequences only achievable on stage. And these moments and this added time really gives the puppets their moment to shine. I think probably the biggest addition and the biggest kind of shift away from the original source material with this play is a lot of the added comedy. My Neighbor Totoro as a film isn't really known for being overly comedic. And the play kind of takes this and adds a wide range of gags. 
such as physical jokes sur surrounding the puppeteers and their multi-rolling, to reactions and certain acting choices that lead to a comedic punchline, such as May's brave face that she keeps putting on. It's a nice element that's been added, and I do think it kind of matches the original tone of the source material. It also feels a bit tongue-in-cheek, which you know I always love. Totoro is a simple concept. Its plot is a bit more slice of life, over following a very strict storyline. This play takes act one to set up the world and really introduce you to the different characters and obviously the different creatures in this world. Then act two focuses more on story and more on the mother's sickness. This does allow us to engage with its world before we then get to the slightly more plot heavy act. While these seeds for Act 2 are sown, I will say it is quite slow paced, but I feel like the show does give you enough moments and enough kind of imagery and theatrical magic to really engage with that it doesn't really matter if it's not the most plot heavy show in the world. Totoro has such clear direction and it's so wonderfully creative. Decisions like having the puppeteers on full show are so fitting and build the world fantastically through the nature and the method of theatre. But now, here's the moment you've all been waiting for. What do I think about the puppetry itself? Now, the pre-show message asks that we don't take any photos of the puppets and that we allow people to truly come and see Totoro and experience for themselves. So. I will be a little bit vague on my descriptions, but I'll try and tell you little bits and pieces of what they do. But let me just say to start with, wow. Tojiro and his friends are just truly brought to life on stage. The puppets are so expressive and so much care is taken to making each one and each character feel unique and different. Uh, while still matching the original film well. Jim Henson's company did the puppets for this show and they did such wonderful work here. The wide range of different techniques used to make every single puppet feel unique and full of character from the small Totoro's to the cat buses. It just leaves you with your jaw dropped. The audible gasp from the audience every single time a new puppet or a new technique was used just goes to highlight the fact of how powerful and how magical it felt to watch all of this on stage. I have nothing but praise for this puppetry. I think what this adaptation of Totoro did was really give me a new appreciation for the film, which I think is such a wonderful thing. I went to see the show with my group of friends. Now these friends aren't massive theatre fans, they very rarely go to the theatre, but what they are are massive Ghibli fans, and massive anime fans. And I think their reactions to this show spoke leaps and bounds about how well it's been adapted, and how well they've captured the magic from the film. They were connected, they cried, they loved every moment. This is a show that really captures the imagination and delivers such a beautiful theatrical experience, not just for the hardcore Ghibli fans, but also for theatre fans like me. So whether this will be your first time meeting the mythical Totoro, or you've seen the film a million times, this phenomenal adaptation is not one to be missed. But what do you think? Have you seen Totoro, the film, or it on stage? What are your thoughts on it? Let me know everything in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me out and helps out the channel. There's some links to some other videos on screen right now, but that's it for me today, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye.